Hey guys, me, Donald Chris Tomer here on this Friday. All right, let's go out to California to the High Sierra. So this is Mammoth Mountain and heavy precipitation. It's kind of a mix depending on your elevation. Anything below 9,000, it's mainly rain. It's kind of just heavy wet snow at about nine. But if you're above 9,500, I think that's where you're going to see the best snow accumulation. Clearly up on the summit, they're socked in at over 11,000. But they had to delay their opening because of the warm, because of the warm air. Uh, and this is what you would see with a strong Pacific storm system packing some atmospheric river moisture. Um, it tends to bring a lot of warm air with it and push the rain snow lines up to higher elevations. So that's Mammoth Mountain. And it's going to snow off and on for like the next three or four days there. Um, it's going to be pretty warm though for the next two days. Let's go up the street. So this is the Tetons. This is a Jackson Hole up there in Wyoming. I mean, clearly, we need snow. It's been warm at the base. You know, they've been making snow. But this is the problem. Uh, this time of the year, typically, it does stay warm. But when you look at the extended forecast, I mean, what we need to do is really bring in colder air so we bring down the rain snow line down here to the valley floor. It, it, I just don't see a whole lot of cold air for like the next week. Now, beyond that, there may be a change, but this is, you know, this is tough this time of the year, November 14th. I think we still have at least two weeks to wait before Jackson Hole opens. So here's radar across the, uh, the, across the west. There's your precip kind of sliding through the high Sierra Mammoth Mountain. You've got a wave of precip with a low pressure going in this direction. The other low is down here. Remember how we talked about the split in the flow, these two lows going in different directions around the Rockies. So that's kind of what we're seeing there. Let me take you into uh, Central California. Again, kind of a mix of rain and snow. Your best snow accumulation is going to be above 9,500 feet. But this little wave's kind of heading up towards uh, Tahoe, and then you've got some residual moisture over the rest of the, uh, the high Sierra. Again, very elevation dependent. Um, let me show you what... Uh, what the water vapor looks like this morning, give you the bigger picture here. So remember on the water vapor up here in the middle levels of the atmosphere, the whites, the blues, that's going to be your moisture. And so we've got an area of low pressure spinning here and then some additional energy kind of cruising in this direction across the northern Rockies. Now, this area of low pressure is going to stall for a couple of days. And it won't actually make its move into the interior until around 1116 to 1117. It'll move through Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona during that time frame. There's been a little shift in the track of this low. Um, ultimately a little bit further to the south, which means a little less snow for parts of northern Utah. Less snow, and I'll show you that in my forecast uh, coming up. Here are my bullet points this morning. Here's what I'm seeing. So we've got the high Sierra snow with the rain snow line pretty high up. Um, that low, which will stall for a couple days, will then move into the interior. And then there's another storm quickly that will come in behind it for 1118 and 1119. Now that storm also looks like it's going to take more of a southern track. Here are your best odds of new accumulating snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So here's how you read it. For Utah, for example, very light precipitation today in the afternoon. Light to moderate accumulations, 1116 in the uh, late uh, 1116 into the morning of 1117. Light on 1118, light on 1119. So not as heavy uh, a potential there in, in the Wasatch as we were talking about yesterday. Um, so for Colorado, you've got some moderate accumulations. In some places, it's probably going to be heavy. And then it may be lighter along the front range high peaks. But late 11, 16 into 17, afternoon 18 into the morning of 19 and 20, light to moderate accumulations. So that's how you kind of read that. Let me show you what the forecast radar is going to look like. So we'll start this up here at lunchtime today, Friday, November 14th. There's your precip up in the Tetons and to the northern tier with that area of low pressure, there's our southern low that's going to sit and spin for a while. So let me put this, uh, let me put this into motion here and we'll start this, uh, start this up. Let me grab the, uh, the frame. All right, here we go. So there's, there's the dinner hour. 
This is probably 5 a.m. on Saturday, November 15th. See the two areas of low pressure. Southern California is still sitting and spinning. That's why we're going to continue to accumulate snow across a lot of the, uh, the high Sierra. There's a lunch hour on Saturday. <clears throat> All right, here's the early morning. This is probably 5 a.m. on Sunday, November 16th. So our big low is starting to make its move. And you can see the, the swirl, the rotation around this area of low pressure. It's starting to push moisture into Utah, Arizona, western Colorado, and eventually into New Mexico. All right, let's move ahead. Here's the lunch hour on Sunday, November 16th. Starting to see snow for the Wasatch, the High Uintas, western Colorado. Look at that wraparound effect. That is, that's pretty intense. All right, here's the uh, the dinner hour. Um, okay, so here we go. This is uh, 5 a.m. Uh, roughly on Monday, November 17th. And you can see a little bit of leftover precip in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. And essentially what you're seeing here is another storm system riding in quickly on the coattails of the last one. That, that'll keep the precipitation going across a lot of the West. Let's look at the uh, atmospheric pressure anomaly. So this is um, 1116. It's 1116 Sunday. So there's our low starting to make its move into the interior. Big low coming out of the northeast, deep with some snow and cold air and wind. Uh, moving ahead, this is 1118. So our low is gone. Here comes the one immediately behind it, which will take a very similar track. And third phase, third time frame, this is 1120. There goes our low. Look how far south it is. And there's another low behind it. All these kind of taking that similar track in that southern tier. Taking a look at Colorado, how does that shake out? So here's a basin. This is a time height forecast. You're looking at a slice of the atmosphere right through it. You read it, you start it down here, and you go in this direction. It takes you about three days into the future. So what do I see? For a basin, uh, most of the precip, and what I'm looking for is green. Now, most of this is, is high aloft. This is aloft in the atmosphere above the high peaks between 14, 15, 16. So you've got some, some higher humidity cruising through the higher, uh, the higher levels of the atmosphere. That's not really anything to worry about. Now, this is more interesting right here because this is all the way down to the top of the high peaks and the ridge lines. And this is going to, that's probably late 16 into 17. So that's really when the bulk of the the best potential moisture uh, comes through Colorado is basically afternoon of 16 into 17. So we'll watch for that. We'll see how that plays out. All right, let's take a, uh, a look at some of the, the precip. So this is total precip over about four to five days into the future, as if everything fell as rain. And where you see the yellows, that's the one inch. So that's an inch. The reds are about two to three inches. So that's your heaviest. Look what, look what happens. So one low goes in this direction. Another low comes out of California and kind of sneaks down through here. Look what it does. Yesterday we had yellows over a lot of the high Uintas and the Wasatch. That's no longer the case today. There's still some blues there. But um, the heaviest precip kind of misses the range, the Wasatch to the south. That's the way it looks today. Let me show you what that looks like as far as snowfall. 10 to 1 ratio. Again, four to five days into the future, takes us all the way out to the 19th. So where you see the deep purples on this, that's at least six inches. The bright pinks, that's a foot. And any you start to see those whites emerge, that's roughly two feet. So there's some decent snow here. <clears throat> over six inches up in Wyoming. Again, not as much as what we were looking at yesterday. And notice the Wasatch. You know, it does hit, it does just barely hit that pink. It's a little over the pink, but again, not as, not as much as yesterday. Pretty interesting pattern there. Let me look at it from a different perspective. Here's from the, uh, the Southwest view of that same thing. Look at these big, look at these whites coming out here in the Southern Sierra. That's up to two feet over the highest of elevations. And look at this snow in Brian Head, Snow Bowl in Arizona. Southwest Colorado does pretty well. You're looking at 6 to 12 inches down there. 
Um, here's my forecast. These are grand totals all the way through the 19th. 6 to 12 inches in the Wasset. So I cut those numbers down. Had to. Uh, with the, It looks like the uh, everything's kind of hinting and trending to the south a little bit. Western Colorado, southwest Colorado still gets the most snow. In Colorado, less up here on the Front Range, high peaks in Summit County, about 3, 4, 5, maybe 6 inches. But you're looking at 6 to 12 out here, Aspen Snowmass, Crested Butte, Powderhorn, Silverton, um, Telluride, Purgatory, Durango, and Wolf Creek. Cut these numbers down a little bit for northern New Mexico, 3 to 6 down there. Still looking at 18s, Bryan Head and Snow Bowl, assuming everything stays on track, and they're the big numbers through the High Sierra. But you, again, you're going to have to be at high elevations. High elevations. 6 to 10 up here through a lot of Wyoming, northwest Montana, 10 to 12 in Idaho, and less up here in the parts of interior BC and Alberta, although Red Mountain and Schweitzer do pretty good. And not a whole lot, unless you're up into the uh, coastal range of BC up there in the Pacific Northwest. Alyeska's got 16 on the way through the 19th. So, I mean, you can kind of see the, the effect. You've got the lows that come into California, and then they kind of take that southern route. That's the effect of all of that. Let's look at the northeast. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so for the northeast over the next five days, you've still got some, again, anywhere in that deep purple is at least six. Bright pink is a foot. So you've got decent numbers up here in northern New Hampshire, northern Vermont, around Tremblant. Um, a little bit of lake effect, maybe, um, but pretty light. So good to see. What does that actually translate into? Here's my forecast grand totals by the 19th. So roughly five days out. Still got a foot up here over J. Peak and Stowe. That's really kind of the bullseye of the area. Mount Washington at eight. Eight over Whiteface. Rain, snow, snow ridge. Less as you drop down, but maybe four or five at Magic Mountain and, and uh, Mount Snow. So that's the northeast. Let's look a little further ahead. So this is the 15-day, 10 to 15-day snow plume. Remember, this is a this is an ensemble mean, so it tends to exclude a lot of the extremes or the anomalies, but generally 14 inches by the 28th. That seems very possible. Error bars are up around 18 to 20. So this is J Peak Vermont. 14 should be no problem. In fact, I think you're going to reach 14 well before the 28th. But again, this is an ensemble mean, very steady growth. Uh, Jackson, Wyoming. The, the issue with Jackson, and this is, you know, all the way down at the valley floor, airport, somewhere right in there in Jackson, is that it's really warm. And so the tough stretch continues until probably the 17th. I mean, at least, maybe even longer. I mean, this, is, this only cranks out one, two inches maybe. <laughs> It's better as you kind of work your way towards uh, November 20th and beyond. You can see it's, uh, the accumulation's a little bit steadier. It's just warm. I mean, that's the problem. And Berthoud Pass, yeah, the tough stretch is right here with high pressure and, and not a lot of moisture. All the moisture's aloft. There's still warm air. It's kind of sitting between the ridge lines and the moisture. Um, but potentially better accumulation out here. I mean, what we need is just colder air. I mean, that's generally the, the, that's really what I'm seeing anyway. We just need colder air in Wyoming. We need colder air in Utah. We need colder air in Colorado to really make this happen. We're just not there, but that's, I mean, that's not terribly unusual for this time of the year. I mean, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day.